Okay, so I'm going to be talking about something perhaps a little bit different. Um, I hope you bear with me. Um, I'm not actually a software engineer and I'm not developing microservices, but I do write software daily, but perhaps for a slightly different purpose. Um, my colleagues will attest to the fact that I'm not really a hardware engineer either, um, as I rarely write RTL. I'm actually a computer architect and um, as part of my job, I work with a team of people designing the instruction set, which is the guarantee that the hardware gives to the software. I think most people think of instruction sets as a fairly sort of constant um, static thing, but actually they're part of a, a bigger evolutionary cycle, which starts with the new applications and services that people like you deploy. Uh, computer architects then profile and analyze them to work out what makes them tick. And then we start to think about ways in which we can evolve or extend the computer architecture in order to uh, make them uh, perform better or more efficiently. Some of that ends up in new hardware and then that hopefully ends up in your hands and then the cycle continues. A key tool of a computer architect is a, a simulator and a simulator allows you to run an application on top of a software model of the system in order to fully observe its performance. Um, there are many ways you can build a simulator. I'm going to talk about a very simple functional simulator that I've built in Go. So at the heart of a simulator is a decode execute loop. Um, essentially you're reading an instruction, decoding it to work out what operation you need to carry out, extracting some fields to work out which registers you need to work on and then you actually carry out the operation. It's important that it's fast, but it's also equally important when you're working as part of a team that the code is readable, extendable, maintainable. Um, there are a bunch of challenges to writing a decode execute loop. Um, one of the ones that I'll talk about today is actually that it's quite difficult and challenging to create a clean interface, as within a computer architecture there tends to be quite a number of different instruction forms, each taking a different number and uh, type of parameters. So how does Go help us out? Well, Go makes handling functions incredibly trivial. And one of the ways that you can make a clean, uniform interface is actually to abstract some of the difference between those instruction forms into an anonymous function and just expose a closure that um, provides one interface for executing any of the instructions within the architecture. A nice property of having a simple interface is that it then makes complex algorithms simple. So um, if, we, if we look at the underlying knowledge of, uh, an instruction, of a program, you find that um, the structure of code is mostly linear. Um, and we can use that to actually gather a sequence of contiguous instructions, um, also known as a basic block, into a slice. And then we can actually execute a whole basic block of instructions simply by ranging over that slice and calling the uniform clean interface that the closure provides. What surprised me, uh, perhaps, from doing this is that this is still a very clean implementation. Um, it doesn't have a lot of optimizations there and I still get a good performance. So this is running at about 25 to 50 times slower than native code running on the actual platform itself. Um, it's not all a bed of roses though and there are some things in Go that are still a little bit tricky um, to carry out. One of them is simulating SIMD. So SIMD allows you to um, take a single instruction and operate on multiple elements within a wider register. And you can see this used all over the Go runtime um, and the standard library for performance. However, simulating them is really ugly in Go. Um, it's non-idiomatic. You end up having to use the reflect and unsafe packages in order to subvert the type system. There might be a better way of doing this. I'm hoping someone can point it out, but this is what I've ended up with. So to summarize, there are a lot of things that I really like about Go. Um, it has great runtime and compile performance, a fully featured standard library. The tools are great. Um, Dependency-free deployment is excellent. Um, I can't, can't rate that enough, actually. Um, and obviously the wider community, um, yourselves, uh, is fantastic to work within. And I'll leave you with uh, the message really that you know, software and the architecture actually are all continuously evolving. Um, and I think it's important for people like me to work with people like you to understand how we can build a better future. Thank you. <laughs>